Yo, what's good, man? Do you really think that Eminem body Jay-Z on his own <laughs> I mean, I definitely think that he got Jay-Z on that one. Not that Jay-Z's verse was whack or anything, but Eminem's flow was undefeated on that song. And I think part of the reason why is because Eminem made the beat. But um, speaking of Eminem, do you remember when he said, I have to be stunned by 40 men to suffer a defeat? <laughs> Yo, what up? My name is Vladimir Riche from ChaseAndRider.com. In this video, we're going to talk about 10 beginner's mistakes that are easily correctable, but a lot of guys overlook. The very first video that I did on YouTube was called Eight Men's Wear Hacks in 90 Seconds. To this day, it's probably still my favorite video. There's a school of thought that your first video should always be your worst video because you're going to be improving as you make more videos, you know what I mean? In my case though, my first video is probably still my best video. I don't know if that's good or bad. I mean, it could be that I haven't grown since I started YouTube, which is not good, you know? <laughs> or it could be I came out the gate on fire. I like to think it's the latter, but hey, you never know. But that video, one complaint that I got is that a lot of the hacks that I spoke about on there were too advanced. If somebody's just starting out, all those good to know those things, but they're nowhere near that kind of level. So I always wanted to make another video where I talk about things that are a little bit more beginner friendly. If you already know all these things, that's cool, but it's funny how some of the things on there, I'm thinking everybody knows that already. And then I see somebody's picture on the internet and they're doing those exact things. Hence the reason for this video. Number one, buttoning both buttons on your jacket. To me, that one is as elementary as it comes. If you have a two button jacket, you should only be buttoning the top button. The bottom button is just there for decoration. I never really thought that I had to say that in a video, but just last week I'm on Instagram and I saw a video of a rapper that I really respect. A dude is around my age and he got both buttons buttoned. And this is a dude that's really into fashion too. When you have a two button suit, once again, just the top button should be buttoned. And most of these mistakes are things that I've done myself. So I'm speaking from experience too. I don't really remember where I was and um, my man Fritz, shout out to Fritz from Finesse Couture. He gave me a dap, like a bro hug. As he's coming in for the hug, he used his left hand to unbutton my bottom button. And I'll always be thankful because I was walking around thinking like, man, I'm killing it. <laughs> you know how it is, guys, I don't really get to wear suits like that. When they do wear a suit, they always feel like they're fresh, you know what I mean? Because it's so different than what they're used to. So I was that guy. I was probably like 21, 22. So from that point on, I never buttoned my bottom button again. I guess it's one of those things that somebody has to tell you for you to really know. But when I'm out and about, I see a lot of grown men doing that and I'm gonna do to them the same thing that Frizz did to me. But I don't know these dudes like that. But if I do see it on a mannequin at a store, I always make sure to unbutton it though. Uh, if you're wearing a three button suit, I really wouldn't recommend that. I think you should only be wearing a two button suit. Unless it's a three row two, like what I'm wearing right now, where the top button is just there for show and it's hidden behind the lapel. So you can't even tell that it's actually a three button suit. And if you're wearing a true three button suit, in that case, I would also say you should only button the middle button, the top and the bottom shouldn't be buttoned. If you're wearing a four button suit, that's not double breasted, you have bigger problems than which button you should button. <laughs> Number two, that's leaving the label on the sleeves of the jacket. Once again, this is one of those that I don't think that I would ever have to say in a video. And then just this past week, Jalen Hurts had a press conference. He's wearing a Gucci suit and on the sleeve, he has the Gucci label still on there. My assumption is he wants people to know that it's a Gucci suit. And if that is the case, that's tacky as hell. I don't care what the brand is should they be having the label on the sleeve, you know what I mean? A lot of people sent that one to me on Instagram asking me what my thoughts were. A few of them were blaming the stylist, like how could the stylist let them leave like this? As someone that has worked with athletes in the past and know how stubborn that some of them can be because they are so good at their craft, they figure they're good at everything. And I don't think that's just exclusive to athletes. I think a lot of guys are like that. People that are very successful in their field. At the end of the day, they're going to have the final say because they're the one that's paying. So as a stylist or as a style consultant such as myself, I'm going to make my opinion very clear that I don't think you should be doing that. But if they're dropping a big bag and they want to have their label on their sleeves, I guess they're just gonna have to have the label on the sleeves, man. But I digress. Your label should not be on the sleeves. I don't care what the brand is, please cut off the label from the sleeves before you wear the suit out. 
Number three, is not cutting the threads that keep the vents together. I couldn't tell you how many weddings I've been to where even the groom still had the threads on their jacket. And in that case, I do tell them usually, like, yo, bro, cut out the threads because it's gonna make you more comfortable. I think the two button one people probably get offended. Like, don't worry, I know what I'm doing. Versus the threads could just be a common mistake, like, I just forgot to do it. Number four is buying your suit too big. This happens a lot with beginners because one thing that I noticed, and I spoke about this before in here, is guys that hate to dress up usually wear their clothes too big. And guys that really think they can dress usually wear their clothes too tight. So when we're talking about beginners, we're talking about guys that usually hate to put on a suit, but they have to do it for an occasion. So those guys typically wear their suits way too big. So when you buy a suit, you don't want it to be too big and you don't want it to be too tight. So you just want to be in the middle. Number five is not getting your suit tailored. Now, even even if you happen to buy the right size of the rack because the salesman hook you up, that's only half the battle. You still got to get your suit tailored. That way it looks like the suit was made for you. What I notice a lot with beginners, their sleeves be way too long, like coming down to here, and their pants also be way too long where it puddles over their shoes. So when you buy the suit, you want to take it to a tailor. That way they can show in the sleeves for you and they can show in the trousers so it doesn't look like you're wearing your dad's suit. Number six is wearing square toed shoes. And this one I'm definitely speaking from experience. Well, all of them, I was there at some point. But this one though, yeah, I was definitely there. When it comes to shoes, you want to have a nice shape to your shoes. You don't want anything that's too square. So you want something that's like an almond shape. You want something that's like a soft square. But you definitely don't want the front to just be like a box. And this is something that I see very often. And of course, those are the shoes that are readily available to a lot of guys. You can go into Kohl's and pick one up can go into Marshalls, Sears. I've seen guys buy shoes from there. So I can understand because it's easy, but I would highly recommend that you do a little bit of research before you pull the trigger on those type of shoes, man. I made a video a few years ago where I was talking about the best brands under $300. Actually, that video is old now, so I do have to make a new one because some of those brands are no longer around, but some of them are. So you can still watch that video and pick up some gems from there, but definitely stay away from square toe shoes. You want something that has a nice shape to it. I talk about shoes a lot on this channel, so there are plenty of content on here that you can definitely watch so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Actually, I did a video also comparing a square last to a round last. If you haven't seen it, I'll link it somewhere up here. I'll also include it in the description. Number seven, this one is a huge rookie mistake but what's crazy with this one is i see a lot of old people dropping it man the guys that know that they shouldn't be buttoning both buttons on the jackets but for some reason they still make this mistake and that's having the pocket square and the tie cut from the same fabric once again i know it's easy because some stores sell them as a set but just because they sell them like that doesn't mean that you definitely have to wear them like that if they do sell them like that it's kind of a sign that you're in the wrong store but i get it because sometimes that's probably all you can afford so you go to a store let's say like marshall's and you see in a box they have the shirt the tie and the pocket square all together so you're probably thinking, oh yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna kill them. But you definitely don't wanna do that. Your tie and pocket square should complement each other, but never match, let alone being cut from the same fabric. It's one of those things that screams out, man, this guy's definitely not used to wearing suits. But once again, it's odd, man, because I've seen guys that's been wearing suits for a long time still do that. And it's one of the first signs that just because you wear a suit doesn't mean you know how to dress. So what I mean by the tie should complement the pocket square. So today I'm wearing a green tie and it has some orange and yellow accents also a little bit of navy and i'm wearing a pocket square that has a bunch of different colors the way i've been folded right now the yellow looks to be the most dominant color although i don't think it really is uh, there's some brown there's some green there's some burgundy but you can see that the yellow in the pocket square the way i have it folded is pulling the yellow from the tie but this is what you really want it's not that complicated but it's also not that easy i made a video a few years ago on how to pair your tie with your pocket square if you haven't seen it i'll link it somewhere up here i'll also include it in the description but whatever you do do not wear a tie pocket square that are cut from the same fabric number eight is wearing shirts like black and burgundy with your suits, man. Your shirt should be like a blank canvas that let everything shine. Your shirt shouldn't be the statement. And I know a lot of guys on TV, 
wear black shirts with their suits. They are always better option than a black shirt. You always want the shirt to be lighter than the jacket also. So white shirts, light blue shirts, striped shirts that are white and blue, light pink. Those shirts work really well because they let everything else shine. You wanna make a statement, wear a really nice tie. You wanna make a statement, wear a really nice pocket square with that tie. So when you're wearing something that's burgundy, and then usually when they wear those kind of shirts, they also have a tie that has a lot of burgundy in it too. You can do a lot better than that. So stay away from those burgundy shirts, those black shirts, and just wear light blue shirts, white shirts, bangle stripes that are white and blue, or pencil stripes that are white and blue, light pink, colors like that. Uh, we almost done with the countdown. Number nine is not knowing the difference between derbies and Oxfords. And this is something that I really didn't know either. I didn't know anything about shoes. So what I did was I gave my sister $100 and told her to give me some nice shoes. And the only request that I had was, I don't want black shoes, I want them to be brown. I didn't know anything about Oxfords. I didn't know anything about derbies. Of course she got me a pair of derbies. And this is what I used to wear with all my suits. Derbies are more casual than Oxfords. So derbies are the ones that have like an open lacing system versus Oxfords have a closed lacing system. Now that's not to say that you can never wear derbies with a suit. Today, for example, I am wearing split toe derbies with the suit that I have now, but I'm wearing a flannel suit, which is a little bit more casual. And no disrespect, but I know what I'm doing. But most guys, they're not doing it on purpose. If they go to a store because they have a wedding coming up to buy a pair of shoes and there's an Oxford here and a derby next to it, they have reached for the derby without seeing that there's a difference between the Oxford and the derby or they have reached for the derby without knowing that the Oxford pair is dressier than the derby. So depending on what you're wearing and what the occasion is, especially if you're not going to have that many shoes, I would strongly recommend that you get a pair of Oxfords first because most beginners when they're buying suits and they're buying shoes is because they have an event coming up. This one is very important, man, but it gets overlooked. So instead of telling my sister to get me a pair of Oxfords, but I just told her just make sure the shoes aren't black and didn't specify anything else because I didn't really know any better. I didn't even really know there was a difference. And number 10 is the proper tie knot and the proper tie length. I've seen some guys on TV where the knot is so bulky that it ends up being the same exact width as the tie. So if you look at mine, you can see the are proportions to it. The tie knot is smaller and then the tie itself is wider. They shouldn't be the same size. That's one thing that I notice a lot where a lot of guys, especially beginners, they don't really know, I guess, how to tie a tie knot. Therefore, they always tie it too big. So what I recommend in that case is to tie a foreign head knot, which is one of the easiest knots that you can do. And the next thing is the proper tie length. One thing that I notice with beginners, they usually wear their tie too short. So if you're standing straight and then your shirt is still visible, beneath the tip of the tie, then the tie is definitely too short, man. But if you ask me exactly where the tie should end, I say it depends. And the reason why I'm saying it depends, most guys have their trousers around their hips versus your trousers waist should be around your belly button. But it's not really your fault because most companies make trousers that have a really low rise as opposed to having a higher rise to where you can comfortably put the trousers where they should be, which is around your belly button. So most men being that they wear the trousers by their hips, in that case, the tie should end right above your belt line, which is the top of the waist of the trousers. But if you are wearing your trousers the proper way, then you can't have your tie end above the waistband because it's going to look too short. Because once again, the top of the waistband is going to be around your belly button. So in that case, your tie should end somewhere around the bottom of the waistband as opposed to the top of the waistband. I hope that makes sense. So that was the 10 beginner's mistakes that are easily correctable, but a lot of guys overlook them. Of course, I can end the video without doing a wrist check. So today I'm wearing my Saab 035. This is my first real watch as far as a mechanical watch with a movement in it. I did make a video about this watch a few years ago as the best dress watch under $500. Unfortunately, Seiko discontinued this watch. So if you wanted to get the same watch and you're lucky to find one brand new, it's going to run you over $2,000 right now. This is still one of my favorite watches to wear. I probably wear it a couple times a week. This is the biggest watch that I have at 38 millimeters. Most of my other watches are 36 millimeters. I hope that Seiko changes their mind and bring this one back at some point. Um, but I really love this watch. I usually get questions about the lapel pin. All of them are from Dapper Woodworks. I'm going to include the link in the description. Definitely check them out. It's a subtle way to make a little bit of a statement. You know what I mean? My watch strap should have given it away, but today I'm wearing brown suede shoes. I mean, the watch strap is not suede, the watch strap is nubuck. 
which is better than suede from what my strap guy told me. So when I was looking to get a strap made to go with my brown suede shoes, he was like, nah, don't get suede, get Nubuck instead. So this is Nubuck, but it has a suede appearance to it. But today I'm wearing my Yale South Spito Derbies in dark brown suede. Definitely one of my favorite shoes. And by the way, I'm very excited about one of the videos that I have coming up really soon where I'm going to be unboxing this guy. Actually, excited is not the word, man. I'm more than excited to share with you what's in this box. It's one of those things that people have been asking me about for a long, long time, and I'm finally able to bring it to you. I think some of you already know what it is. I've teased it a couple times on Instagram. So if you think you know what it is, drop it in the comments. But that was the 10 beginner's mistakes that are easily correctable, but a lot of guys overlook. Hit the thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe, or everybody's gonna think that you're a hater. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.